Okay, this video is going to show you how to start from scratch and get a Raspberry Pi up and running with RetroPie 2.3. So using Raspberry Pi to play those retro games that uh, came out in the 90s like Mega Drive, NES, SNES, all the emulation can run quite happily on a Raspberry Pi and uh, this is what you're going to need. Now this Raspberry Pi in the video is a B+. There are four models essentially of a Raspberry Pi. There's A, A+, B and B+. The A models have got half the map memory that a B does, so they've got about 256 meg and the Bs have 512, so you're better off getting a, a B model. And the main difference between a B and a B plus is the amount of USB ports. So you can see here we've got four USB ports and a, a standard B just has two. Um, also a standard B, rather than a combined audio and video component out, it has two separate ones, whereas the B plus it's got it all in one here. But besides that, they're pretty similar. They've both got um, 512 meg of RAM. They've all got uh, an Ethernet port for network connectivity and you've got GPIO pins here to extend the functionality so you can put add-ons there if you want to get more functionality out of a Raspberry Pi. Um, this side here you can see there's um, the micro SD slot that's uh, push and pop so it sort of stays in there quite firmly underneath there. The B model has a mic, um, SD size, so they do use different card sizes. The B Plus uses the micro, which is uh, this model here. Now you've got power on the end here, in sort of micro uh, power section there, HDMI for the video out, and that's about it. So a B Plus will cost about, about £25 from Amazon, and uh, that's the core of the system, that's the main piece that uh, would do all the work for you. Now separate to that there are other pieces you're going to need so one optional piece is a case for the Raspberry Pi. You don't have to buy a case but it does protect it, make it a little bit um, safer in case it gets dropped or otherwise damaged. It's, um, it can make it look good as well so there are a lot of cases out there. A case typically costs about something like in the region of £5 but again you've got to make sure that the case you get suits the model so this case supports B plus because it's got the right amount of um, USB ports uh, to expose at the end there so you can make sure that it fits properly. So there's the case. Separate to that, the most important place is probably um, getting your micro SD card. There are some micro SDs for a B Plus that are incompatible but they're few and far between and it's usually the really high sizes. For RetroPie something like 16 gig is going to get you a lot of systems on there. That would get you pretty much all of the older systems and maybe just some of the Game Boy Advance games um, might start running out of size on a 16 gig card but you can get 32s quite happily and people have even got 64s but it depends how much you want to um, how many systems you want to emulate really I'd say with a 16 gig card you can get um, you'd easily get all the snares, Mega Drive, uh, MAME, Neo Geo, um, Master System so pretty much the whole range I'd say 16 gigs pretty safe you could even get quite a lot with 8 gig but um, the cost is so low with 16 gigs probably only about six or seven pounds on Amazon so micro SD is what you need and often you'll get a free adapter like this one to make make it easier to get into your computer because quite often the PC will have an adapter for a, a standard SD size so you can just pop it in that to copy across any files or ROMs that you want to get on it so a micro SD card for the B plus is um, essential or if you get a B model um, for whatever reason you might already have a B just make sure the card is a SD card not a micro SD card so that's the card and you're going to need to power the Raspberry Pi the power supply for the UK it's a standard 3 pin and it's 5 volts and 2 amps for the B um, I think the amp is lower 1 or 1.2 something like that but for the B plus they recommend 2 amps like this power supply here, but besides that, it's nothing really special, just 5 volts, 2 amps, and that quite happy um, power it. Obviously, it needs the right connection at the end. And again, that would just fit into this micro socket here. Uh, and lastly, or well, pretty much lastly, we've got the um, USB gamepad. Now, pretty much any USB gamepad will work and get configured, so compatibility shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, you can get quite a lot of different styles. This one's obviously pretty similar to a, a SNES controller but like I say any USB controller that you want to buy from Amazon probably something like eight to ten pounds per controller should work no problem. 
you can get uh, PS3 wireless, Bluetooth or Xbox um, wireless controller, the Xbox 360 controllers to work as well but that's slightly different because it works on Bluetooth but um, still quite possible to hook up to a Raspberry Pi but the USB wired controllers are quite popular because they're pretty straightforward to, to use pretty much plug and play but you can see in one of the separate videos how to plug in a, or configure a USB controller and besides these pieces of kit I've shown you, the only extra piece you'll need is an HDMI connection to get that to your TV, but you've probably got one of those um, already behind your TV that you can use to test this out. And that's pretty much all the pieces of kit you need to get to get your Raspberry Pi up and running with RetroPie.